Hello, and welcome to The Laddercast, where we teach you how to leverage your assets to change your life. I'm Sorsha Porter, and in 2016, I bought my first home, which completely changed the trajectory of my life. I turned that property into a business, a trip around the world, a new career, and quadrupled my household income. And now I'm a real estate agent licensed in Oregon and Washington. And I'm Shannon McAllister. After finishing college with a degree in finance, I was in a job I hated but couldn't quit because I wasn't making enough money. I signed up for a class to learn about mortgages taught by a real estate investor. 17 years later, I'm a nationally licensed mortgage lender, homeowner, and investor myself. We aim to educate how getting on the property ladder by owning just one home can change lives. It changed ours. Hello and welcome back to the ladder cast. We are on episode 25 today. Wow, look at us. And it is time to winterize your home. Today, we're going to go over the top four things to do to protect your investment this winter. Seasonal home maintenance is a vital part of owning and upkeeping a property. And it's probably one of the things, if I had to guess, is the least tended to by homeowners. It seems daunting. It seems terrible. And it's hard. It seems hard to do. But it is the most probably one of the most important things you should be doing every year to keep up with the maintenance of your home and protect your home from damage when winter weather happens. My house is guilty of the bad behavior around winter home maintenance. We tend to do things when our house screams and is asking for help. And so I am working to fix that this year of trying to get ahead of a few things. And I would like not to end up with frozen pipes, maintenance calls, things like this, this coming winter. So to that end, we have a list of the four areas of your home that you should be tending to. Most of these items you can do yourself and are at no cost. There are a few things that could incur you a service call, but over the cost of an emergency service call, a maintenance service call is much better than when something has broken. So because the rest of the things on the list are do yourself. Not a whole lot of excuses you have for ignoring them other than they're hard and I don't want to. So get up, dedicate a couple of hours over a couple of weekends to these four areas of your home. You're going to be set for the rest of the winter. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The first first one on our list is gutter, water, and roof maintenance. This is the system. Your gutters and your roof are the system that keep water out of your house. Um, and only we only like indoor water features when we install them intentionally, not when they start coming through the ceiling in the middle of the night. So first and foremost, this is easy. Clean your gutters. They carry the water away from your home. This is important. Make sure you check them that they're all properly attached to the to your house. Sometimes the weight of debris will cause them like you know nails to pop out and you want to make sure you reattach them. And big gold star if you do this in the summer when they're dry, so you don't have to dig out wet sludgy gutters by hand because that's gross. Check your downspouts for clogs and ensure that they're carrying water far enough away from the foundation. We want to keep the foundation walls nice and dry, and that is a function of your gutters as they keep water moving away. Because if you just had a roof and no gutters, the water would run off the edge of the roof and fall because it kind of tends to fall towards the house and splash on the ground and splash onto your onto your foundation and if it happens enough times it will slowly degrade the quality of that cement now that's interesting i'm going to put a a story in here that we didn't talk about because it just came to my brain right now as not everywhere around the country does gutters places that have heavy snow things like that tend to not do gutters and so that's interesting but the point of the story is even if you aren't gutter people Watch your water patterns. Make sure that water is diverting from your house for whatever systems you've chosen to get water out of your house. Make sure that they aren't clogged and that they're working properly. Yep. And and that is, it's super easy. It's something you can do yourself or maybe you find a nice strapping teenage neighbor kid who wants to make a little extra money and do it for you. Or maybe your friend's friend does it on the side as side hustle. You don't have to DIY it if you don't want to, but definitely do it. All you need is a ladder. All you need is a ladder and hands. Hands. And if you're like me and Josh dealing with my mother's gutters a couple weeks ago in the rain, because we did not earn the gold star, 
you need a big bucket to dump the sludge into that's really gross. Then you got to figure out what to do with it once you have a bucket full of sludge. So you might need a couple of extra utensils. Need some more. You might need some things, but the moral of the story is check your gutters and check your roof. Check your roof for debris. Um, you know, leaves, neat pine needles, random bits of stuff blowing through the air get stuck on our roofs. And our roofs are what keep our house dry. So we want to make sure that we get any unnecessary debris off of the roof. You can do so with a soft brush or a soft broom, but you never, ever, ever want to rake your roof. I see so many homeowners this time of year up on their roofs with a rake. And that's just like, I every time you rake your roof, you may as well say goodbye to five years of your roof's life expectancy. It's just very hard on the shingles. You should never rake your roof. But you can pick up the leaves with your hands. You can brush them off with a soft brush. Um, and Or you can hire someone who's a professional to come and do a roof cleaning. It's not dreadfully expensive. It's usually, depending on your roof, it runs anywhere from $300 to $700-ish here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, that sounds like a lot. I think I'd rather clean my roof. Yeah, a lot more people would rather do that. <laughs> But it, you know, in the if you're someone who can't, that is an option. Yes. Um, all right. So water in your house that you didn't put there is bad. Take care of it. <laughs> That's number one. If you do nothing else on this list, this is the one yeah. to do. Long-term yeah. water buildup in and around your house causes more damage than you are going to want to pay for later. This is the number one. If you do nothing else, take care of the water situation in and around your house. Easy as yeah. that. Number right. two. Pipes and water sources, be freeze ready. So cover your outdoor water spouts, hose bibs with insulated covers or replace them with frost free spouts. Do not be like me who forgot that one of their water hose bibs existed and forget to cover it and then have to replace it after it has exploded in your crawl space and caused your pipes to crack. Um, That was a really fun way to spend Christmas. Don't do that. That's do terrible. They do. Um, when water freezes in a down, like so, when you have your when you turn off your downspouts, water is still in the line, and so when you turn it off, that water doesn't necessarily flow out of the line. And if you don't either drain it or cover it, then it's just sitting there. And when winter comes and frozen temperatures come and they freeze the water in your pipes, that water expands. And if you have old, older pipes or just metal pipes in general, they can only handle so much expansion before they crack. And that is what happened to my pipes. I had one crack in my crawl space three days before Christmas, and it was very expensive to get it to like stop and also to get it replaced. So just recommend if I had just put a four dollar hose bib cover on that hose bib and have not forgotten about it and checked it with my own two little eyes that wouldn't have happened any pipes on the exterior of your home just cover with an insulative material you can get it at home depot it's so cheap Um, and it's much cheaper than having to replace those lines i had no idea i we have never once covered our hose bibs outside but uh it's on josh's christmas list this year of things he's going to receive nice hose bib (laughs) covers Yep. Had no idea. Similar to that, you've already said any outdoor pipes, pipes that are taking water to or from your house outdoors that are exposed to the elements. One yeah. I learned last year, It's it was so strange. It happened to my house and my mother's house on the same day. I'd never even heard of it before. Your furnaces have a drip pipe to expel water in your furnace that doesn't need to be there. Mine froze. Mm-hmm. Yep. Condensation. That's the word I'm looking for. Mine froze. And when it freezes, your furnace stops because it reads danger. We can't expel the water that's building up in here. Uh, In my house, that was fine. Josh was able to find it, thaw it, fix it. Heater came back on. Later that day, my mother's froze. uh, And her heater went off. But I was frozen in my house on a hill and I couldn't get to her. So everybody's drip pipes on their furnaces are going to be attended to this winter so that we all have heat. I had no idea. I'd never even heard of it. I have owned a home for 20 years. I'd never even heard of it before. Well, and part of that might be because a lot of people's water heaters are in areas of their homes that are also heated. So if your water heater is in a space that doesn't receive a lot of heat, 
this is something that could happen to you. That's mostly water heaters in crawl spaces or in like utility rooms that have no heating system because they're not designed as a living area. Interesting. So, and the drip pipe, if you're if your situation is so arranged, the drip pipes go outdoors and it's just literally a little piece of pipe sticking out the side of your house. And for us, that's what froze. Yep. Yeah. It happens. It happens to the best of us. So do your best to prevent things on and in your house from freezing, expanding, and exploding. Yep. Okay. Got and it. Nextly. Number three is your major system. And we are basically talking about your furnace and your water heater. We've talked about the water heater, but these are things that you should have a service professional come out and check every year. It's not very expensive. In fact, a lot of HVAC and plumbing companies will put you on like a service maintenance plan if you ask for very little cost. Um, you have those things cleaned, have them serviced, have the knobs and the things tightened because that's how they reach their maximum performance. Nowadays, these systems are so like advanced and sensitive that they really do need to be regularly maintained because like Shannon experienced, when her water heater sensed that something was blocked, it shut off and it wouldn't turn back on until the blockage was removed and the system was reset. And that happens with furnaces as well. I had my furnace, um, I, bought a, I bought a new mini split system and we turned it on the other day to heat the downstairs because it was chilly and it wouldn't turn on and we got an error so I messaged my guy and was like hey could you come take a look and he's like okay I'll, I'll come take a look and he opened the front panel which houses the filter and the filter had like an half an inch of dog hair and dust on it and he's like well this might be why you are having this error because air is not getting through this and it turned out, I didn't know this, I needed to clean my air filter once a month. I had no idea because I had only ever had a, a furnace that was like under the house. So my first time getting mini splits, they just require a little bit more regular filter maintenance. Because I think a furnace standard furnace filter maintenance is probably quarterly, something along those lines. And that's a thing that you can also do is call and ask your your local people like, what what should I be doing? They'll tell yep. you. They'll love it if you ask them because they go out for the things that broke because people didn't ask. Yep. So it's better to pay for a standard maintenance call than an emergency repair call. That it is. Check your major systems. And again, gold star if you do it outside of the winter, but it's winter is coming, definitely do it now. And then finally, we have exterior maintenance as it relates to your garden. So have your trees trimmed and cut back so frozen or snow-laden limbs don't come crashing down. Um, I can confirm that one, have had it happen. Broke a no. skylight in my house. Actually, it was a neighbor's tree's limb that was overhanging my house, came down during a windstorm and crashed onto a skylight, broke the skylight. So now I have an indoor water feature. And the only alternative at that point was for Josh to go to Home Depot, buy a new skylight and install it during that wind and rainstorm. So that was pretty exciting. What a fun time. You can talk to your, this is a good time to talk to your neighbors about their tree maintenance um, and point out if you have any overhanging your property. Now in the city of Portland is my understanding that if a tree limb or branch is on your property line, you are allowed to trim it. While the responsibility may technically fall with the homeowner, in the city of Portland is my understanding that you do not have to wait for them. You can just take care of it. However, in other areas, that's not necessarily the case. So it's best to talk with your neighbors about it. And in the end, just kind of be be eyeballing things like what what could get heavy and crash on my roof that I wouldn't mind, I would not like having happen. And I'm sure that you, if you have this situation, you're already thinking about, okay, I need to talk to my neighbor. Or I need to call an arborist. And this is a good time to do it. Definitely don't try and climb 100 foot trees and cut down big branches by yourself. This is a thing for a professional. But consider doing that now before we start getting snow and ice. Yep. Yep. Then, my neighbor across the street likes to climb trees. He thinks he's a professional and he offers all the time to climb ours and cut out, cut down really tall limbs. And we're like, well, thanks. No, nah. we'll take the one with insurance. Thank you. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> um, and then finally is garden prep. 
those of you who've listened to us know that I am a gardener and I love gardening and I'm obsessed with my garden. So this time of year, I take the time to prune back my excess vegetation, clean up my garden, you know, pull weeds. I don't rake leaves because leaves um, are where beneficial pollinators live during the winter. So unless it's in a walkway or somewhere where someone could slip on wet, slippery leaves, I leave it in place. Um, And then I also, this time of year, mulch all of my garden beds. Um, Why do we mulch in winter? We mulch in winter because it takes four to six months for mulch to become soil. And by, well, it can take much shorter or much longer depending on the conditions. But if you just leave it there, you know, four months, it will become soil. And, And by mulching in winter, it protects the soil that it's on top of. And as the mulch breaks down, it adds nutrients to the soil so that when you get to spring, you have lovely, fresh soil to plant all of your vegetables and fruits and flowers in. And I really like to use this really cool thing called Chip Drop to do that. So what is Chip Drop? Chip Drop is our partner for this episode. We're very excited. They're our first partner. We love Chip Drop. Um, And Chip Drop is a free service to get the mulch that I speak of. You can get the mulch that takes care of your yard at no cost to you whatsoever. Um, Basically, Chip Drop, they have a website. You go to the website, you put in your address, and you can, for free, have wood chips delivered to your home by an arborist. Um, There is, you can add a donation if you choose, but if not, it is at no cost, and there's no obligation to pay for it. Um, The big things to know about Chip Drop is you will get a lot of wood chips. Um, you do not get to select the size of how many wood chips you get. So if you are someone with a small yard and maybe you think, oh, I don't need that many wood chips, this would be a good opportunity to connect with your neighbors and say, hey, who else needs wood chips to get ready for winter? Maybe even use that as an opportunity to sort of trade Zs on winter garden prep. Maybe someone in your neighborhood loves to clean gutters and maybe you love to do the gardening prep. Trade. That's a great chance to do it. Um. So you don't get to select the size of your load. So be prepared for a big one. Um, the timing is up to the arborist. So the website will give you an estimate, but you don't get to choose the exact date and time it is delivered. If you make a donation, you often will get your delivery faster um, because the donation helps cover the arborist costs and they're going to go for the ones that are less expensive for them first. And you can do this anywhere in the US, UK or Canada to get your chip drop Go to theladdercast.com and click the Get Chip Drop button. It's that easy. And that will take you to their website where you can sign up. Huge shout out and thank you to Chip Drop for partnering with us in this episode. We're very excited to work with you and excited to share the information about your service with everybody who listens to us. So in conclusion, thank you for listening today. We appreciate you. If you are located in anywhere in the United States, Shannon can help you get a mortgage. Go to theladdercast.com and click on work with Shannon. If you are looking for a home purchase to buy an investment property or otherwise, and you don't know who to work with, you can go to the button that says work with Sorsha and reach out to me. If you are not based in Oregon or Washington, I can connect you with a realtor in your area who does what I do and specializes what I specialize in. And all that said, thank you guys for listening today. Get on your winter garden prep and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.